travel beggars in the Philippines. Um, if you're not used to people begging, you're going to be in for a bit of surprise because Philippines has a ridiculous amount of people begging. Um, but a lot of these people aren't from Cebu. Um, it was quite interesting talking to some of the local people in England earlier because there was a German guy that was assisting with some people living at the dump site in England earlier. Um, and the guys in England earlier were really annoyed and frustrated that the fact that this, A, they don't like the fact that uh, England earlier is seen in a bad light, but B, those beggars um, and people living at the dump site are from Leyte, from what I heard. Um, so they don't see it as I mean Minglanilia's problem, and I can understand in some ways because what they were saying is basically if we help them, it only encourages more people to come, which sort of is why I have an issue with um, what do you call it these refugee camps around the world because they just leave people uh, in a state of limbo. It doesn't help anybody because they just become a financial drain with no solution in sight. Um, so I can understand from both points, you're looking at people that have got nothing and for the same time the local community saying, look, don't help them because you're bringing more people into the area and we don't want them, you know, there's no reason for them to be here, we didn't invite them here, etc. So you end up with this scenario where both parties, one's trying to help and one's trying to say don't help them, but the one question is, why are they there? How did they get there? What was the thing that forced them from Leyte in the first place? Is it the overfishing? Is it having things like the um, Chinese, etc., um, stealing fish en masse? Is it a case of their land being stolen from them? Is it all these sort of things? Because a lot of the issues are never discussed. And I know charities are just as bad. They don't actually look at the root cause. Because if you said, look, you've stole my land, where do you want me to go? Then at least you can point the finger at somebody and then they'll say, yeah, but it was my land. They were squatting on there for the last 20 years. It's now I've decided to have them thrown off because we're going to develop it. Then we had no right to be there. Whatever, you know, at least you'd have something that says why they're there in the first place. Most things don't. Um, I know from a lot of the charity projects which really bug me um when they build these things like uh there was a big um fl flood in cdo a few years back i remember daisy klein sent me pictures and stuff about the fact that the charity organizations have gone there set set up these houses and stuff these uh, sort of shanty type houses with cheap plywood um they're basically just cheap and nasty but that wasn't the issue the issue was it's on somebody else's land these people got nowhere to go um a lot of them were squatters in the first place so if you were already not uh at a right uh, if you've got no right to be in one place and then it was flooded out and you these uh do-gooders set you up in another place and then the landowner says you know i want you off my land you nobody invited you here where are these people supposed to go? I mean, it, it frustrates me because a lot of it is to do with overpopulation on the planet. Um, okay, the, there's a disproportionate wealth levels, but a lot of the there's not a lot these people can do. They, they're not well educated, etc. So where do they go? Because nobody actually wants to talk about the realities here. The you know, let's talk. The, let's be honest here. What what are these people supposed to do? But the other thing with child beggars you'll get in Cebu, because you'll see, like, they'll be prompted by an adult. They'll, like, nudge them, oh, go and look at that, there's a foreigner over there, go and get Because they'll use children, because they're more likely to get money out of you. And what I'll say, do not give them money. Don't give them money. Um, you don't know where it's going, and I know from the Talise area, they, they use it for rugby glue. Um, I haven't got it small cap here but if you imagine a 
a whiskey bottle, for example, you know the screw on cap, it's about this big. What they do is they'll fill it up with glue and they're buying small quantities of glue, glue to go glue sniffing. Because you get drug dealers that encourage these kids to get involved in it, they'll give them it free, get them addicted, etc. Then they've got them running around all day trying to get enough money for their next fix. Welcome to the Philippines. Um, I've also seen it's a problem in Africa as well, it's the same, same thing, but also this addiction keeps people in that cycle it's frustrating annoying and I know Mercy in Action does a lot with the kids to try and get them off the streets and in Cebu um, I'll add a link of their website still going because I haven't heard from them for a few years but the the point here is there is some good organizations out there um, a lot of the problems with charity organizations is a the do-gooders. The problem with do-gooders is often they don't understand the local politics, etc., and don't want to get involved in politics because you often hear we don't get involved in politics. But you, sometimes you have to. There's only way you can understand what's going on. You've got to understand this guy's clearing his land to these people. He's not a bad man. It was his land. There was no reason for them to be there. He may have allowed them to stop there for three months. And it's now ten years later. He said, I've had enough. Get off my land. You've got to understand all the issues to find a resolution but a lot of the time like refugee camps will set them up then charities disappear problem with that is kids parents everybody left in limbo on somebody's land somewhere because it's not the charity's land charities don't own land as far as i'm aware unless they've actually got orphanages and stuff somewhere but on these large-scale projects it's often not a good environment um, and it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable and it, it's not a solution. Um, what you actually want is to actually try and, you know, if you've got a natural disaster, you want to try and encourage people back to their villages, etc., by doing stuff in the villages. But you need to understand the people, which is why on a previous video I talked about container um, housing, because there was a project where they replaced a load of housing in the Philippines with shipping container housing, which required cooling um filipinos can't afford aircon <laughs> i don't care what anybody says the average filipino that's living in a nipper hut is struggling to eat most days they cannot afford air conditioning and some ngo non-government organization in their pearl of wisdom idea uh decided to change the way their their house was constructed and made it a nice metal building uh like i said my idea for that sort of thing is you have a metal house somewhere it's basically the storage for the village because obviously nipper huts are easy to break into but if you actually had a secure shipping container in a village it becomes something extremely useful um, because it's one place that's very difficult to break into on to the next thing so the kids will approach you and they, they tug on your arm it's really annoying uh, I know it's I sound a bit selfish here saying that but they will actually nip you sometimes if you're not acknowledging them and what I do is I'll normally buy them some food or something I will not give them any money because that says it goes on drugs it goes to other people they, they, it's a lot of it's running gangs it's not a oh just feed me it's they're probably not going to see much of it. it they're running around ragged all day because the little kid it's much easier to collect money than their their parents or whoever it is that's utilizing them because it's done by gangs a lot of the time it's a bit like clothes you know you know when you send all these clothes overseas to the Philippines or whatever here's a little thing they make them they make the clothes there's no shortage of clothes um, but more importantly a lot of the clothes get sold on the market uh, you know they'll take what they can and then they'll sell it myself no issue with that because at least the money's going into a household um but at the same time when some of this stuff goes astray with you know customs etc they sell it on as okay 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 is second hand um so it's exploited it's why when typhoon Haiyan was about there was people there was some of this aid stuff turning up in other countries still in the same bags because the corruption's so bad so if you're going to help somebody in the Philippines, help a child, I would recommend doing something very simple, buy them dinner. 
you know, what I normally do is I'll get some stuff out of Jolly Bee or go to a um, what do you call it? One of the street vendors that with the old barbecue or something, and I stand there and make the kids eat it um, because I want them to eat it. I don't want them giving it to somebody else. They're the one that's bugging me, so I'll make them stand there and eat the food because <laughs> I'm not paying paying for them to go and give it to somebody else. Um, I'm looking after that kid. But it is quite heartbreaking if you're not used to it. Because um, a lot of these kids are scrawny, they're malnutrition issues, etc. And they've got drug issues. And even some of them are into child prostitution. Um, Talise has a problem with it. And it's horrendous. But the only way to stop it is actually... Like I say, some of these problems are down to the corruption in the country. Others are down to the problems where the people come from in the first place. Uh, but also you have a lot of child runaways, which are why it's important that there's more done to try and help get these kids into a stable environment. Um, it's difficult to do. It's very difficult to do. But like I said... You can at least feed a kid if you want to. I'm not saying you have to, um, but I, myself, I do when I can. I don't, I don't mind buying a kid a burger or something, you know, because what, what's it cost me? Nothing, you know, it's pennies. But at the same time, I won't give them money because they'll end up spending it on drugs, um, and I know they do because <laughs> some of the charity organisations I do know will that actually say, oh, he's a drug addict because they. They sometimes go and collect the kids from these drug dens where they, they'll go in, take the drugs, and then they'll like pass out or whatever they do. Um, so the charities try to wean them away from it. But I said, there is some good charities out there. Um, it's just the big ones, I would avoid like the plague. Um, it's, you've got to spend a bit of time with charities to understand them. You've got to spend a little bit of time with them to understand where they spend their money. Um, myself, I'm all for good charities which actually put a bit of thought and effort into it um, that actually understand how to create a change. I mean, for a child to change, you have to take them into education. You've got to take them into a stable environment. You've got to move them away from all the demons that are destroying their lives and their childhood and convert them into a citizen of the world that is going to develop into a, a person that remembers somebody took them off the street, somebody helped them and not remember that they were abandoned, which is not an easy feat to do. Right, thanks for watching.